for the faculty, staff, and students of George Washington Carver Elementary School, I'd like to welcome you to our 2022 Black History Program. Inventors, educators, activists, doctors, philanthropists, dancers, business owners, athletes, and so much more. Yes, Black Americans are extremely innovative. During this program, the students of George Washington Carver Elementary School will display the many contributions that Black Americans have made. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our program. do you see? I see a vice president that looks like me. Brown girl, brown girl, what do you do? I thought, I hope, I spoke what was true. Brown girl, brown girl, what do you know? That there are strong women who want me to grow. Brown girl, brown girl, what do you feel? That black girl magic will help us all heal. Brown girl, brown girl, what do you see? I see a world that sees my skin before it sees me. Brown girl, brown girl, what you gonna do? March, fight, and create till I make this world new. Brown girl, brown girl, how are you so strong? Cause we got queens in our blood to help push us along.
1972, Mr. Johnny Clark was elected mayor of Tuskegee, Alabama as its first black mayor. During that same year, Mr. Ford co-founded the Southern Conference of Black Mayors, which later evolved into the National Conference of Black Mayors, incorporated in 1974. Mr. Ford later established the World Conference of Mayors, incorporated in 1984, that convened mayors from the United States, Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. On January 8, 2015, Mrs. Marilyn James Mosby was sworn in as the 25th state attorney for Baltimore City, making her the youngest chief prosecutor of any major American city. Mrs. Mosby received a presidential scholarship from Tuskegee University, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science in 2002. Black 
love. I am like this, I am intelligent. I am strong. I am a survivor. I am a fighter. I am the voice. I am sweet. I am Rosa Parks. I am Dr. Martin Luther King. I am Madeline X. I am Sojourner Church. I am Frederick Douglass. I am Dessa Coleman. I am Kat Johnson. I am Louis Lavin. I am Sherwood Jackson. I am Freddie King. We are like this. was founded by Lewis Adams. Its first founder principal is Dr. Booker T. Washington. The university remains to be a center of excellence for African American education. The university was approved as a national historic site in 1974 and is the only university campus in the country to be named a national historic site destination by the National Park Service. You know. In 1960, the city was the subject of a civil rights case, Goldmillian versus Whitefoot, in which the United States Supreme Court ruled a redrawing of the city's electoral district boundaries to prevent black from voting was unconstitutional. The unanimous court held that it violated the 15th Amendment to the United States Constitution. This case was one of several cases that led to the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Did you know? One of the most famous teachers at Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University, was Dr. George Washington Carver, who developed over 300 products from the peanut and, uh, and over 100 products from the sweet potato. Our school is named in his honor. Did you know? During World War II, Tuskegee and Tuskegee Institute were also home to the famed Tuskegee Airmen. This was the first squadron of African American pilots trained in the U.S. military for service in that war. Do you love getting a happy meal from McDonald's and eating with your friends inside the restaurant? During the 1960s, many African Americans were not allowed to eat in restaurants with white people or denied service due to the color of their skin. Tired of the unfair treatment at restaurants and with African Americans overall, four students got together in Greensboro, North Carolina, stayed to sit in at a segregated Woolworth lunch counter and refused to leave. A sit-in is any organized protest in which a group of people peacefully occupy seats prohibited to them in a restaurant or public place and refuse to leave the area. During sit-ins, the people protesting have to sometimes endure harsh language and even violence. Still, they would not be moved until the restaurant closed for business or the police took them away. They would often come back the next day with more people to take part in the sit-in. After the city and World War started getting attention, people all over the United States started staging sit-ins against segregation and for treatment and service. Sit-ins started taking place in places like Montgomery, Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee, among other places. 55 cities in 13 states all used the sit-in protest to fight for equal rights. Even Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. took part in the sit-in. Do you think you can sit calmly and not be at the people who are yelling, throwing things, and punching you? Let's see how brave people are during students. Okay, remember, we go in here. We can't fight back. No matter what the people do, we must show them we're going to keep striving for fair treatment the right way.